Daniel CB Towers just showing you a quick rundown of how to hook up a generator. First thing I like to do, come over here, check your power panel, make sure everything's wired up correctly. You got your black wire, leg one. On this one you have a red wire on the leg two. Leg three will not have nothing because that's for three phase. Half the stuff we do will only be single phase. Then you got your neutral and your ground. It's important to make sure all this is hooked up correctly and just like this. For some reason somebody hooked it up for a three phase, it's usually like a commercial building, retail store, something like that. They'll take a, one of these and steal it, they'll use for a hot wire. And if you go hook it up, it's going to burn everything up. After that, I like to come over here. Biggest thing, identify what you're working on. Make sure that says AT&T or whatever equipment you're working on. Next biggest thing, lock issues. Say that lock, half the time people don't know the combination and they also don't like you cutting them. Find a screwdriver, see how easy that was? Didn't even have to take the lock off. Voila. Next thing, these are your tail ends, the cams. They're all color coded, so that way you know they match what's over there at the power panel. I don't know if you can see it, but it's a little set screw on the very inside. And also, underneath here, you'll see a flat part. That set screw's got to go to the flat part. Sometimes that's turned sideways. If it's turned sideways, you just identify it so it make it easier for everybody hooking up. Get them twist, just give it a little yank. That little screw will keep it locked in there. All right, other than that, come over here. It's a cutoff switch, mainly for when it's sitting in the yards. It'll be cutoff switch, so none of the power will be wasted on it just sitting. This one's right here. Sometimes there'll be one on the side right here, or either on the battery terminal itself, just a simple throw down contact. Cut that on, and come on this side. Uh, you hear it be buzzing, it means it's on. Emergency safety switch, just slap that, in case something happens, and it'll kill the whole unit, it'll cut off. Pull it out so you can engage it. You got a run, an off, reset, and an auto. This generator is capable of sitting on site, maintaining power in case of emergencies, so usually, It'll be a fixed generator, and that's what we put on auto. That way they can program it and set, cycle, do maintenance on it, and all that stuff. But this one's portable, so we always cut on run. Alright, biggest thing. These have been sitting, who knows how long, three months, six months, not doing nothing. Let it run. Let all the lubricant cycle, rotate, all that stuff. Don't want to cut it on, throw a load, short some amount. This one's been running about half a day, so it's okay to do. Main breaker, off, now it's on. All this is hot, plus the wires on the other end. Take your meter, put it on AC voltage. That means AC, your meter might say AC, plus the digital reading says AC. Black goes to your neutral or your ground. Red goes to the hops. So check that, we're getting 140. Check that one, getting 140. I got the third phase cut on, so if I check that, I'm getting 140. Same thing if you touch the grounds, it's still showing. It's good. This panel cover will be up here. AC power, that goes to the meter. Generator power is what we're going to be running off of. This will be your AC power breaker. Cut it off. Go to safety over. Cut this on. With that like that, you cannot cut that on. So it will not back feed or burn up anything. If some reason yours is not like this, you might have something different. This is the only one I would trust. You could take another precaution, find a meter for AT&T, and there's a breaker on that meter. Just cut that breaker off. Next, what I like to do is take your meter. This one's not wired up to read anything, but 
take your meter, put it on AC, neutral, check it, make sure it's hot, check it, make sure you get the same voltage. Come down here, make sure it's splitting it up right. Get voltage there, get voltage there. Something might have happened right here where it's shorted out and it just might not be reproducing the right uh, voltage on each leg. Another thing, see how easy that was? Make sure they're all popped in and also trip them. Then make sure you know that they're on. Other than that, call the switch. They'll contact AT&T and let you know the site's on air. And that's it for that. Uh, just in case you have to come across a site that don't have the cam box, you might have this one. It's called Appleton. Half the time, we're not supplied with an Appleton. So that's where hard wiring comes into play. Most time will be provided with these pigtails. I've already ran them. You would look for a two inch knockout, knock it out with a hammer, screwdriver. If not, have a two inch hole saw. Drill your hole toward the bottom, not the sides. That way, no rain will leak in from the sides or anything. It's all at the bottom. Run them up. Then take them up the side. And you have to undo this. This right here would go right here. It's in there. Undo that. Push it out of the way. You can even tape it up if you want to. And then you put our black wire. It goes to where the black wire was. And our red wire will go to where the red wire was. And then you have your neutral have your ground. If you notice, that's green for ground, but there's no green wire. Grounds and neutrals share on the ground bars, on the bus bars. So this actually can be over here, that can be over there. Just because you don't see a ground wire to it does not mean you, it can't be hooked up nowhere. It can be hooked up on the same bars. After that, you take them same ends that we plugged up at the cam box, and you would hook up each one of these and then cut it on. If some reason you don't have these, you would strip the locks off of that one where it's just bare wire and run it up and do the same steps into this. If some reason you fail to you know, do my little checklist, it might be set up for three phase over there. You come over here, hook it up, and because you didn't check it, somebody might have stole a wire to use for the third leg. Say they stole your green wire and you didn't pay attention. It's hooked up to green, so when you power it up, guess what? You're gonna blow it up. You can hurt yourself, maybe kill yourself. And also, you'll damage all the equipment and burn a generator up. If you come around the backside, this is what it could look like if you burnt the equipment up. It's pretty much all melted, welded down. that happens, all that is producing spark out to you. So just please be careful. Hook everything up correctly. Go through all the steps. If any reason you feel uncomfortable doing something, just notify somebody. It's your life. All this is not worth you losing your life. Somebody will come out and help you out, or either they'll send you on another job. But uh, just be safe out there. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you.